And now here is Pastor Arnold Murray. Good day to you. God bless you. Say welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this family Bible study hour, Ezekiel chapter 34. God has given the parable of the Babylonian War, which is a type of how it's going to be with the Babylonian War mentioned in the great book of Revelation. What is, what is the prime of Babylon? Babel, confusion, nonsense. God is not the author of confusion but um, he is uh, naturally the author of peace, sanity, and common sense. And God would even say, my children are destroyed because for lack of knowledge. The knowledge is here in his word. Absorb it so that you're not destroyed, or I should say, so you don't destroy yourself by being deceived. God in this 34th chapter is coming down on the shepherd. That's to say the preachers. That is to say the fakes. God does not like fake preachers. That's old boys that claim they have a calling from God and they don't have anything. Our Father doesn't like that. As a matter of fact, we're going to start in the 11th verse, but to fix the subject, verse 10, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. They're not feeding them in the first place. Feed them a bunch of malarkey instead of the word of God. Neither shall the sheep, uh, shepherds, feed themselves any more, for I will deliver my flock from their mouth. That's to say their lies, that they may not be meat for them. Going to rip them off for the last time. And our Father means it. It's going to happen. You know, being a teacher of God's Word, that's where judgment starts. I would really uh, be very uncomfortable teaching His Word if I hadn't done my homework and to make certain it is God's Word rather than man's Word. So with that having been said, chapter 34, verse 11, a word of wisdom from our Father in Yeshua's name. And verse 11 reads, for, concerning the shepherds. For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, that's emphasis, friend, will both search my sheep and seek them out. A lot of people think that part of those sheep are lost. They're not. God didn't lose them. They lost themselves. Verse 12. As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. That is to say the day of the heathen. Those ten tribes went north over the Caucasus Mountains, were later called Caucasians, settled over Europe, then America. They don't know who they are, basically. They, that, many of them would be lucky if they could trace their genealogy back three generations, much less ten. Kind of a sad situation, is it not? And many would say, well, now that just isn't so. Well, what, what Bible do you study? Do you know who the King James Bible is from? It's from one of the daughters of Zedekiah that went uh, with Jeremiah to Europe. That's history, friend. It's real easy traced. Verse 13. And I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries, and will, not maybe, will bring them to their own land, and feed them upon the mountains of Israel, by the rivers, and in all the inhabited places of the country. Do you know when that transpires? At the seventh trump. Not until. What, what, what do we consider feed when you're in a spiritual body? Well, we saw an example of it for the angelic body of this heaven age and earth age. It was manna. What will it be when this comes to pass? Feeding what? Truth. God's word will never change. That's why you never waste time absorbing it. Verse 14, I will feed them in a good pasture, his own. And upon the high mountains or nations of Israel shall their fold be, and, they sh and uh, there shall they lie in a good fold, and in a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains or the nations of Israel. Verse 15, I will feed my flock, 
and I will cause them to lie down. That means to rest or to stay. They're not going to move around anymore, saith the Lord God. Verse 16, I will seek that which was lost. I'm going to shepherd them. That's what God is saying. And bring again that which was driven away, and will bind up that which was broken, and will strengthen that which was sick, but I will destroy the fat, the fat what? Shepherds. I will destroy the fat shepherds and the strong. I will feed them with judgment. That is to say, God's judgment. People skip here and there and skip over God's word. Um, even in the book of Revelations, start to teach the church of Philadelphia and skip verses 9 and 10, which is the the food of the whole chapter, you lose that, you lost everything, and you listen to a windbag. You've got to take it as God stated it. It's very necessary. Verse 17, And as for you, O my flock, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, or you look here, I judge between cattle and cattle. I judge between the sheep and the goats, between the rams and the he-goats. That's to say, between those that would be leaders, especially in the church. Very interesting. Our Father is not all that happy with shepherds, whether it be political or whether it be religion, if they're fakes. The real thing, he blesses. That that is false, he takes care of it. Verse 18. Seemeth it a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pasture? But ye must tread down with your feet the residue of your pastures. And to have drunk of the deep waters, that means the still and the good waters, but you must foul the residue with your feet. In other words, you take the food of God's word and you wait in there and stir the bottom up until people can't see the clarity of God's truth, nor do you teach it. And that's what he's upset about, is that those that claim to be teachers of God's Word do not teach God's Word. If they learn one sermon that is connected with salvation, that's it for, for their lifetime. All they can teach is salvation, salvation, salvation. Milk, milk, milk. Never getting into the meat of God's Word whereby a poor person can sustain themselves in this troubled time because this word written by the prophets from Almighty God tell you how to be strong and to know what tomorrow brings, even in this generation, whereby they have strength, knowledge, and understanding to be able to sustain themselves mentally, spiritually, and physically. Without, hey, don't ever let them see you sweat on your first cruise, friend. You only got one time through here, and this word, God says, as it is written in Mark 13, Behold, I have foretold you all things. What? Through the prophets. Yeah, we got a prophet in our church. That's not what he's talking about, some fake. He's talking about Ezekiel, the prophet that he sent. Isaiah, all the minor prophets. You don't need any more prophets would be claiming to be. He foretold you all things through these prophets. You start listening to a bunch of knuckleheads and see where you end up. He said, they just stir up the water till nobody can see the truth. I don't know, have you ever, maybe you're acquainted with that. When you hear some teacher, do you know what he's talking about? Maybe he doesn't, but do you? You should. God sent this letter to you. Whether the preacher knows what he's talking about or not, you have the tools to do your own study. 19. As for my flock, they eat that which he, ye have trodden with your feet, and they drink that which ye have fouled with your feet. That doesn't have much to live for, do they? When it comes to teaching, what is the famine for in the end generation as it is written in the great book of Amos, chapter 8? The famine is not for bread, but for hearing the word of God taught chapter by chapter and verse by verse. Verse 20. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God unto them, Behold, I, even I, for emphasis, friend, God swearing by himself, 
will judge between the fat cattle and between the lean cattle. I'm going to judge between the fat shepherds and my scrawny sheep. Hey, look out there, so-called shepherd. That day's not all that far away. How are you doing? Well, I like to raise money from them. All you do, rip them off. How about teaching God's Word sometime? You know, if you're going to take their money, at least give them their money's worth, and then you don't have anything to be ashamed before God. But God doesn't send out beggars, so if you're a beggar, you're one of these shepherds that he's addressing here. A very direct, am I judging? No, no. Hey, if the shoe fits, wear it, son. This is God's word, and you're going to be judged by it. But brother, aren't you being a, well, hey, a brother that loves his brotherhood speaks truth whereby people have a chance to change. Otherwise, let them burn in hell. God's not happy with them. He's going to judge between the fat shepherds and the lean cattle, scrawny sheep. Verse 21, because ye have thrust with side and with shoulder and pushed all the diseased which y with your horns till ye have scattered them abroad. You go up and hit them in the forehead and say you're healed. And I didn't send you. You go up and spit on them or something else and say they're healed, and are they? Of course not. What was God's order for healing in the New Testament? He said, you will take the oil of our people and you will anoint, not spit on, but anoint with the oil of our people and ask God to heal them. If God does, fine. If he doesn't, that's his business. I'm just telling, teaching you how to tell the real thing from a fake. That's all. Okay, verse 22. Making friends, influence, and people here, all right? 22 reads, Therefore will I save my flock. You want salvation? God, through the Son, is your Savior, Yeshua, Yahweh's Savior, Jesus. I will I save my flock, and they shall no more be a prey. From who? Wolves? No, shepherds, preachers, reverends. And I will judge between cattle and cattle. 23. And I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them. Even my servant David, he shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Psalms 23. Let there be no mistake. I don't know. He is the living word, both the old and the new. Have you listened to him? Or do you listen to windbags? I don't know. Which is it? How educated are you in God's word? That'll answer the question real quick, because if you've had a teacher, you should be pretty familiar with it. If you've been studying for any length of time, or if you have a good teacher, it won't take long. Verse 24, And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David, a prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken it. I want you to make a note, a mental note, of who the prince is here that is among them. David. Because it will come up in the 46th chapter in the Millennium Temple. Verse 25, And I will make with them a covenant of peace, not Babel, peace, and will cause the evil beast to cease out of the land, and they shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. In that millennium time, it's going to be safe, so safe, you can go anywhere, anytime, and do whatever. You'll be, you'll be safe. 26. Can you do that today? I don't think so. It's going to change. A lot of garbage is going to fall by the wayside, and good riddance. Verse 26, And I will make them and the places round about my hill a blessing, and I will cause the shower to come down in his season. There shall be showers of blessings. You can receive them now. It's God's truth. This is the time for the early rain. Then comes the latter. I don't know. How's your old plant? Wilted? Or is it flourishing in God's Word? 27. 
And the tree of the field shall yield her fruit, and the earth shall yield her increase, and they shall be safe in their land and shall know that I am the Lord. That's the point. When I have broken the bands of their yoke, whose yoke? The fake shepherds, false preachers, reverends. When I have broken the bands of their yoke and delivered them out of the hand of those that served themselves of them. You should remember specifically, he told us what they would be teaching in an earlier chapter that he would rip it from their hands. Do you remember what it was? Wonder, wonder if we turn there, if it would be familiar to you. If you, I mean, can you look around you today and analyze for yourself? Who is God going to rip his people from their hands? You remember back in the 13th chapter, following the 18th verse, where he said, you're going to have these so-called daughters of religion, my own people. See, we're all the bride of Christ. Understand the feminine. And they sewed this religion together that one size fits all. Okay. Fits all armholes. Remember it? was in the 18th verse. But he said, I'm going to tear them from those fake preachers' arms. Do you know what the fake preachers were teaching? He told you in verse 20. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God of the 13th chapter, Behold, I am against your pillows, your religion one size fits all. Wherewith you there hunt the souls to make them fly. Rapture! And I will tear them from your arms and will let the souls go, even the souls that you hunt to make them fly by your lies. I know many may not like that, but that is God's truth. That's what the fake shepherds were teaching. Do you, you want more definition? Go back to that chapter 13 and see who the subject is addressed to. Fake shepherds, false preachers, and what they would be teaching flyaway doctrine. You don't have to understand God's word. You're going to be gone. That's a lie. People skip over so many words in God's word that they don't understand what temptation means. They really want to escape because they're weak, not founded in God's word, have no strength. Incidentally, the word Ezekiel means El is strong. God is strong or God will strengthen you whereby you can face the foe and know you're going to win before the battle begins. Because we have the victory. We are can-do type people. We don't listen to a bunch of malarkey from a bunch of, of uh, false shepherds, but hunger for the real pasture of Almighty God, which is to say His Word. Ezekiel L. strengthens. How strong are you? You afraid of the dark? You sweat on your first cruise? Well, grow up. Mature with the meat of God's Word. Hey, I'm just a teacher of God's Word. God is the one that said those that teach you to fly to save your soul with that religion that one side fits all. I didn't say that. God did. If you've got a problem with it, take it up with Him or answer for it on Judgment Day. But stop lying to people. Verse 28. Back in chapter 34. And they shall no more be a prey to the heathen. That's to say the goy. You're, many many uh, Christians are made fun of by people that call them goy. They don't even know what the word means. That's what the Hebrew word is for heathen. Neither shall the beast of the field devour them, but they shall dwell safely, and none shall make them afraid. I'm speaking of the manuscripts concerning goy. 29. And I will raise up for them a plant of renown. That's the Messiah. He's coming. And they shall be no more consumed with hunger in the land. They're going to have a teacher that will teach. Neither bear the shame of the goy anymore, or even be called goy. We're going to educate them. Jesus would say, I am the vine and you are the branch and God does the pruning. He's got some big old pruning shares and he's going to clip a bunch of waste off 
soon. Good riddance. Verse 30. Thus it is a teacher's duty to teach God's word and save as many of the dead spiritual branches as he can through the Holy Spirit. Verse 30. Thus shall they know that I, the Lord their God, am with them, and that they, even the house of Israel, are my people, saith the Lord God. I'm going to show them. You don't have anything to sweat. Where are they today? Where is the house of Israel? Where is the house of Judah? Do you know? Did you know there are two separate houses? We'll document that in the 37th chapter, verse 31. And ye my flock, that's my children, the flock of my pasture are men, not sheep, men, Adam. And I am your God, saith the Lord God. I don't know. Do you love him? He loves you. And his word is of a truth. There's, it should strengthen you. It should remove fear from you. Because knowledge and understanding of our Father's Word is the word, Ezekiel, it strengthens you. God strengthens you. Chapter 35, verse 1. Now we're going to leave the correcting of the shepherds for just a moment, and we're going to talk, begin to talk about nations again. Do you recognize them? Chapter 35, verse 1. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, To son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir, and prophesy against it. Ezekiel is the prophet that would prophesy against them. What's this Mount Seir? It's a nation, all right? The word in the Hebrew is Saul, and it means a he-goat, a devil, or a hairy kid. It's where Esau got his name, and it's Esau's people, all right? It's, they would later move north, called Edom, which means red. They would become a red nation. And then they would um, later, by the Volga, be called Rush, and then later Russia. It has nothing to do with the peoples of Russia, but the systems that are there that would drive or claim there is no God. Thank God for the strong people that are there that know there is. Verse 3. And say unto it, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee, and I will stretch out mine hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate. I mean, it's going to happen. You're going to read of it in the 38th and 39th chapter. And we will document the geographical location from the Hebrew language. I will do that for you when we get there. Verse 4. I will lay thy cities waste, and thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Without God, no nation is blessed. Verse 5, because thou hast had a perpetual hatred, couldn't help it, poor old Esau, and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword, in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. In other words, you kept pouring it on and making trouble for them. Hey, this comes right up to date, friend. Verse 6. Therefore, as I live, God swearing by himself again, saith the Lord God, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Saith, this is a... Um, um, an old um, Saxon word that should be translated since. And since thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. It's going to happen. Verse 7. Thus will I make Mount Seir most desolate and cut off from it him that passeth out and him that returneth. God's going to do it himself. You'll find that out in the 38th chapter, especially the 39th. Our army will have nothing to do with it. God will. So what? So that an atheistic com country, that is to say that part of it that is, will know God is real. Verse 8. And I will fill his mountains or his nations with his slain men, in thy hills and in thy valleys and in all thy rivers shall they fall that are slain with the sword. 
This is called Hemengog, the valley of the multitude of Gog. And you know who's going to slay them? God himself. Verse 9, I will make thee perpetual desolations, and thy city shall not return, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Never again will God allow that regime that is controlled basically by Satan, the old he-goat, Never again after the seventh trump, verse 10, because thou hast said these two nations and these two countries shall be mine and we will possess it, whereas the Lord was there. It doesn't matter. Remember somebody pulling their shoe off and saying, we will bury you? Do you know where these two countries and two nations are? How familiar are you with God's Word? Have you ever read the 25th chapter of the great book of Genesis where this woman who was too old to even conceive, bear, um, or rather, uh, this person who um, had these children and she was told by Almighty God not only would she have one child but there were two nations in her womb and that the younger would, the older would serve the younger. And as you go on into the 27th chapter of the great book of Genesis, you find the prophecy where the one would live in the Hebrew manuscripts away from the fat of the land. That is why all their land is north of our further, uh, until we paid seven million for Alaska, Stuart's Folly, they call it, is the greatest move the man ever made. Um, but our entire 48 lies south in fertile ground where they are north in the cold uh, and um, unproductive land. It didn't happen by accident. It was God's plan all along. Verse 11. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will even do according to thine anger and according to thine envy which thou hast used out of thy hatred against them. And I will make myself known among them when I have judged thee. That being the point God wants, to ne wants them to know he is real, he is actual, and he's the boss. Twelve. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord, and that I have heard all thy blasphemies which thou hast spoken against the mountains of Israel, against my children, saying, they are laid desolate, they are given us to consume. You know, and, and we were allies with that lot. And when they mar marched south all the way to Berlin, and tried to control the situation. Don't forget, God's the one that's in control. They built a wall right across Germany, the, the city Berlin. Built that wall. Do you know what brought that wall down? You no doubt, or, or all of you can remember seeing the pictures. It started with 10 people on church house steps in a prayer session. And it grew, this didn't happen overnight. Those 10 people prayed that that wall would come down and they could be united with their people. Ultimately, it grew and it grew and it grew and it grew until it was an overrunning mob with hammers and so forth that brought that wall down. God brought it down. That's my point. I've often said I wish we had the names of the 10 people that begin that prayer quest. And anytime someone asks this little old question, does prayer really change things? Then let them know about those 10 and what they accomplished through prayer to Almighty God. What a, what a point that happened in this generation of the fig tree. How exciting it is. Verse 13. Thus with your mouth ye have boasted against me, and have multiplied your words against me. I have heard them. Do you know now why Malachi chapter 1, God says, I hate Esau. I mean, that's God, our father. I love Jacob, 
But I hated that Esau. And for you New Testament folks, that that's all you ever kind of read is the New Testament, you'll find the same writing in uh, Romans chapter 9, where God says again, while they were yet in their mother's womb, Jacob I loved, Esau I hated. In other words, he hated that nation before the father of it was ever given birth. Why? That soul was with God in the beginning. And your father understands. If you don't understand, put it on the shelf and let it rest there a while, okay? And continue to study. Verse 15. As thou didst rejoice at the inheritance of the house of Israel because it was desolate, so will I do unto thee. Thou shalt be desolate, O Mount Seir. And all Idumia, this means um, especially Idumia. Do you know what Idumia is the, is the key word to blood, okay? And it means red. The red nation. Got it? Even all of it, and they shall know that I am the Lord. And uh, it appears I skipped 14. We better back up and get it. We might... Uh, be, would be blamed as I accuse some uh, big old preacher for skipping the main guts of uh, the third chapter of concerning Philadelphia. I'd be guilty of the same thing. Well, let's go back and get it. 14. Thus saith the Lord God, when the whole earth rejoiceth, I will make thee desolate. Why is the world rejoicing? Those that love God. Those that love the Lord Jesus Christ those that understand and serve him, those that follow him and rejoice at the coming of Jesus Christ, are you going to be one of those that rejoice at the coming of Jesus Christ? Or have you been listening to this chapter 13 flyaway stuff? You see, the real danger of the flyaway stuff is this. They've forgotten to tell you by skipping little verses here that get to the nitty gritty, that the false Messiah comes first before we gather back to Christ. And when they're not even taught, <clears throat> excuse me, that the false Christ comes first, they're going to jump in the sack with him, thinking it's Jesus. They're going to go to a, a wedding that they're going to regret very much. They're not going to be rejoicing. They're going to be praying in shame for mountains to fall on them. Why? They didn't study God's word and as God said from the beginning, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And let it be said, for it is written, God is against those that teach my children to fly to save their soul. In this religion, so unto all armpits, one size fits all. Don't be taken in by malarkey. Study your Father's Word and listen to your Father's Word, not man's. This man or any other man, check it out for yourself. Our Father's Word is so complete. He has foretold us all things. Again, I mentioned that once before. Do you know where that's written? In one place especially important to me is he stated that again in Mark 13. Which means what? Behold... And what is he warning about when he says, Behold, I have foretold you all things? He said, I feel sorry for those that are with child when I return and that give suck. You know what? He, he was talking about a spiritual thing. I feel sorry for those that listen to the flyaway doctors and jumped in the sack with the spurious Messiah took, place, uh, took uh, part in the fake wedding or the wrong wedding and already had a child, meaning they had been impregnated mentally and spiritually with the lies of Satan and were nursing, giving suck and nursing along even Satan's work rather than God's by false doctrine. That's why it's so important, beloved. And that's why Jesus would say, Behold, I have foretold you all things. See that He's, he's been away for 2,000 years. What does it mean if he returns, and, and this is spiritual, spiritually finds you with child? You weren't faithful. 
you didn't remain a virgin. What are we going to do with you? Read the Revelation chapter 20, the last four verses. There's a special place for those people. It's a hot old time because they're destroyed for lack of knowledge. When God foretold you through the prophets everything you needed to know to be an overcomer, to not be a coward, to be a can-do type person for your Father, Almighty God. Don't miss any of the other lectures in this book of Ezekiel. It's about to get good. Hang around. Your Father loves you. Let him know that you love him. All right. Bless your heart, too. Listen a moment. Won't you please?